Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 68, we'll take a look at automating architecture governance. In lesson 55, we learned about architecture decisions and the use of architecture decision records. Um, Michael Nygaard had coined these, and he said that we will keep a collection of records for architecturally significant decisions. And these are decisions that we make as an architect. And we learned that using ADRs in Lesson 55, architecture decision records, was a great way of being able not only to document an architecture decision, but also to form a justification. Now, in this lesson, number 68, we're going to take one step further and see how to ensure the compliance of these architecture decisions that we make in an automated fashion. And I want to show you two open source frameworks that you can use. The first is something called ArcUnit. Now, this is for Java, and you can find it at arcunit.org. The second is NetArc Test, and this is for C Sharp, um, which what Ben Morris basically did was they can import uh, from ArcUnit and converted it so that we can have the same kind of automated tests for C Sharp as we do for Java. So ArcUnit will be for Java, NetArc Test for C Sharp. Now let's take a look at how to apply both of these. And the first I want to do is let's take a look at a simple architecture decision here. In a traditional layered architecture where we have presentation, business, services, persistence, and database, what we have is an architecture decision, which hopefully is documented and justified in an architecture decision record. Again, if you haven't seen that, take a look at lesson 55. Um, but only the business and service layers can access the persistence layer to control change throughout the architecture. In other words, we don't want the pre presentation layer to access the persistence layer or the database directly. And notice we have a closed layered architecture. Well, let's try ArcUnit first and actually see how we can write a programmatic test so that we can automate the governance of this particular architecture decision. So the first thing we're going to do in ArcUnit is I'm going to define a class here called Architecture Governance Tests. And I need to basically load up those classes. And so I'm going to import packages. And this is all using the ArcUnit API. I use the class file importer dot import packages for com, my company, my app. And so that's basically the root package structure. Now let's write a test to govern this. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to name this something that we can actually, I, I love naming these, by the way, and this is how I name my tests, to basically describe the architecture decision. In other words, presentation layer cannot access persistence layer. And so let's actually utilize the API and see if we can automate this. So notice how this says, no classes dot that dot reside in a package presentation. And so this is anything in presentation should dot accesses classes that reside in a package persistence. So notice the no classes in the thir third line there. No classes that reside in a package presentation should dot accesses classes that reside in a package persistence. And then we have a because clause, which I really love. And because <laughs> the point is when somebody from the presentation layer team ends up talking directly to persistence, this test will fail. And we want to tell the person why. And the because clause will come out on a failed test to say, we have a closed layered architecture to control changes made in the database and persistence layer because we are incurring a lot of changes. Therefore, persistence layer can only communicate with the business layer. And then we say check. And so this is the only, this is all the code there is. And so this would run based on a trigger through either a commit or a deployment, um, wherever you have uh, the test hooked in. Now let's take a look at another test because I want to show you this in C Sharp. And so using NetArc test, let's do the same exact thing. And so I'm going to create a namespace, governance rules.structure. Um, and now let's see this. Here's my architecture governance tests. Presentation layer cannot access persistence layer. And this is the name of this particular test. And now what we have is this types in the current domain 
dot that reside in a namespace mycom.myapp.presentation should not have a dependency on mycom my app persistence. And then we get the result and pass the is successful into the result variable. And so you can kind of see it's a little bit different style of API, but still very, very mm, uh, in intuitive. And so let's take a look at another example, because I want to show you how sophisticated some of these tests can be. So here we've got an architecture decision that basically says that all shared objects used by business objects in the business layer should reside in the shared services layer in order to isolate and contain shared functionality. So let's see how we can automate this. Let's use ArcUnit for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a test. Here's the um, uh, method. Shared services should reside in a services layer. Hmm. How do we enforce the fact that classes reside in a specific layer or a specific component in a domain-driven design? So let's do this. Classes dot that that are annotated with shared service. And so con correspondingly in NetArc test, uh, we can use an attribute in C Sharp instead. But here in Java, we use annotations. And so those classes that are annotated with shared service to identify that as a shared kind of component dot should reside in a package services. And again, because all shared services classes reside in the business, um, to be able to isolate that dot check. Now, there's one other example I want to provide, and that is kind of a full-featured aspect of a layered architecture, by the way, that I do use also for modular monoliths. Now, um, here we have a traditional layered architecture, and our architecture decision is to respect the open and closed layers in order to control change throughout the architecture. Now notice, we've got closed layers, which means that the presentation must go through business before getting to anywhere else. Business, because services layer is open, can hop over services, but has to go to persistence, can't talk to the database directly. And so we've got open and closed layers. Let's take a look at another kind of mechanism within ArcUnit that we can actually apply automated compliance. Layer dependencies are respected is the name. So layered architecture. Now, here's what the interesting thing is. We can still use this for domain-driven design in our modular monoliths by a component being, quote, a layer. But I'll show you how this happens. So the very first thing we do in this kind of a test is we describe our architecture. For example, layered architecture dot layer presentation defined by that package structure, my app dot presentation. Layer business defined by my app dot business. Layer services defined by my app dot services. And layer persistence defined by persistence. So we can actually describe either all of our components, our modules, or our layers. Now we can apply the rules. Are you ready? where layer business may only be accessed by layers presentation. Notice services may only be accessed by layers business. That precludes presentation from hopping over that closed layer. Whereas persistence may only be accessed by layers business and services. And so both services and business can get to persistence. And now we have our because clause when this ends up failing. And so this is pretty cool because now we can describe components as layers as well. And then the where layer just substitute component. And so now we can actually have access rules to various components. Really, really powerful. There are so many examples and API uh, examples in both ArcUnit and NetArc test. And so for ArcUnit, um, here's three links that you can use. I showed the examples here where you can go directly to the example tests and also the user guide, which has the API. My recommendation, everyone, you can go through the API, but it's, it's, it's pretty exhaustive. Um, I prefer to actually go through the examples so that you can actually see the kinds of things that you can actually 
automate for compliance. Now, for those of you in C-sharp with NetArc test, um, Ben Morris has done the same thing. And so if you go to GitHub NetArc test tree master samples, you can see all sorts of other examples. In my opinion, it's the best way to learn uh, the API. Um, also, the jar for ARC unit is available on Maven, and uh, you can do a NuGet on NetArcTest.rules uh, in uh, C Sharp. So for other information, you can certainly go to Developer to Architect. Um, these lessons are housed in Software Architecture Monday um, at developer2architect.com slash lessons. I do offer um, private training classes, and which you can go to on the training uh, link. And also, you can see where I'm going to be available either through online training or also conferences and public events by going to my upcoming events page. So this has been Lesson 68, Automating Architecture Governance. I would encourage you to take a look at those links to really kind of go deep in terms of how to use this to be able to automate some of the architecture decisions that you're making. And so this has been Software Architecture Monday. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening.